Hi, welcome to Classic Car Cave. Um, this is not on the two projects I'm currently working on, uh, but this is about the rollover jig um, that I have. Um, I got a viewer called Paul Hardman. He's got a 1969 Series 2 OTS or open two-seater convertible. And he's been watching a lot of the E-Type videos and he was asking me about this particular jig. Now, obviously, I've, div I've uh, modified this for the Mini to fit on it because this Mark III Mini here, 1970, um, I'm going to rebuild the body and then sell it. I have the logbook for it, the registration. Uh, I'll sell it with the original front subframe, which is in good condition because it's the twin bolt system on this. As you can see, oh, you can't see. That's through the main one, but there's a twin bolt on here and the front subframe's quite good. The back one's knackered. And I don't want to do any more minis. I've done four or five, or, or I don't know how many we've done. Um, so this is really to show anybody who wants to make a rollover jig what you can do. Um, okay, now the reason I've got it off, uh, just to put you in the picture, is in a, about four weeks time, I have a friend from Dubai, he's, uh, he's actually Irish, but he, he's lived in the Middle East most of his life, worked in the Middle East most of his life. And he's going to be retiring soon and he wants to start doing restorations as he retires and he wants to come over and he's coming over for a week, Brendan is his name, I'll do some videos if you guys are interested. So what we're going to do is strip some engines down, um, particularly a, a mini engine that I want to have a look at and a few other bits and pieces and I'll video them. Um, if you're interested in actually seeing a mini engine pulled down for the first time, uh, he's a complete novice, he has no, no uh, experience with engines whatsoever. So I'm just going to take him through the basics. The fact it's a four cylinder transverse engine makes no difference. It's, it's, the, it's the block and the, and the head and the ignition and um, timing and the valve timing that we're more interested in, just to give him the theory of it. And I'm going to teach him a bit of welding as well. A week isn't long, but anyway. So that's the reason I've got this piece out is what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put make a new tubular up um, with a flat plate on it, something a bit bigger than that, but about that kind of thickness, um, maybe a bit thicker, um, which will fit in about here somewhere. And then this will attach to the side of the A-series engine where the uh, oil housing is, the oil filter housing is. This is how they're normally attached. And obviously having these feet on it will make it nice and sturdy so he can we can spin the engine over take the gearbox off first and then strip the engine down so that's the reason i've got it out and i've got to make this plate up for it so normally that would be like hang on so I'm just back out <laughs> typical there you go. so normally obviously this would slide round and go and go in there so it slides on those bottom ones which are just stabilizers and then this would go into here and you obviously put your sorry it's not very well done but so this would just go in here as a as, as a break onto these pieces here so but it goes in the other way around obviously it goes in from that side so i'll give you some basic measurements of it so this is set, set up for a mini uh, but you can use the adapter jig easily to do anything. So these bars you're looking at here, these are the bars that run from end to end if you were doing uh, an E-Type or an XK150 and that's why they've been adapted the way they are. You, and you might be able to see um, where we put the, ex for, for the original, for the, for the E-Type they were much smaller. There you go, there's the, there's the bit that we welded. So. Originally it would have been this length from here to that end for the E-type and then I had to put that extension piece on it So we put basically put a piece inside it spot welded it and then brought this together and did a complete join all the way around Which you can see there um, Yeah, so we had to extend it for the XK150 But the bars would, have, would be the same uh, because basically the car the car body or the shell is sitting on top of these so these measurements are what, what's really important for the E-Type. So that is five centimeters by five by 10. So it's 10 centimeters high by five centimeters 
Yeah, by five centimetres. So ten by five. So that's the that's the box section you, you need for um, the monocoque chassis on an E-type to sit on because this is the 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 chassis rails or the monocoque rails are exactly five centimetres. And the reason that you use these is because it means you can line them up with the original rails. So when you put new floors in, you know that the floor should actually come in line with this piece here. Um, and they're done at, done at an angle. So the best way to do this is to measure across the bottom of yours now, um, Paul and whoever's watching this video, uh, and make sure they're in the right direction. I can, I can show you, obviously, from here, um, so you can see how this is just two box sections and obviously that, that piece at the end would, would slide onto here and go up against there and then there's a bolt you can see underneath there at the end which stops it sliding off so you, you basically knock them up into here. <coughs> so this end, it's very difficult to do with one hand this. Give me a second. So at this end they're 45 centimeters and that would be ten, de depend on the drop that you've got but it's 45 centimeters on the front and on the back it's 55 centimeters so there's 10 centimeters of difference so on an e-type it, 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 it comes from the front to the back it veers out slightly over so over the length of the car it's 10 centimeters so 55 on the back 45 on the front now what I have what, 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 what's been done with this one is you can see basically how it's made so these legs if you undo these two bolts there's a leg in there so there's a, a 90 in there with uh, which holds this side on so you can actually take it apart and, and move it around or store it otherwise they're quite big to store and it's very basic it's just an L shape two bolts in there, two bolts in there, and that would normally go into there. And then an upright, two side supports, uh, two gussets on it, and the same thing on that side. And obviously inside this one um, is, the idea of this is that um, with these two bolts, I can adjust the height. So this pipe inside goes right down to the bottom. So you can adjust it to whatever height you want. It needs that adjustability in it for sure. And again, it's just a piece of pipe, the tubular goes in, and you could even anchor it here and here. Very little to it. But that doesn't just have this, have its, um, uh, you can't just change the height there, you can also change the height here as well. So what we've done there is, this piece here is just a cap box section with bolts on it through there, as you can see. And then this comes up. And then this one here, with these two bolts, you can slide this up and down. So in fact, you've got three ways to actually move it up and down because what you want is a jig to be able to turn easily and you don't need two people. And so it's easy to get it. Basically all you gotta do is put a jack under it like that there and bring it up and down till you get it to the right height and it spins properly. So as I said, this is a mini one, but normally these wouldn't be in here. They'd just be the two, those two bars there on either side and go from front to back. But I changed this for the Mini and as you can see there's a bar going right through the centre. If this had been an earlier Mini there would be a round uh, patch on here where they used to actually roll them the same way but they had a tubular on them and they used to put them through the, the dipping process like that. But what we do is just cut that back open and when the car's finished it'll be welded back into place. You need that for the stiffness. Having them just on the front and the back is not strong enough. It will uh, bend. Even with a roof on the car, it will bend. And as you can see, this Mark III is going to have all new floors, new scuttle, new inner wings, and new outer wings, new landing panel, new A-frames, door skins. Uh, also, it's going to have a new core panel here because some idiot decided to take this off the back. Um, and also door steps, uh, flitch panels, they're basically quite a lot of work on it, but it's a, it's a, it's a 1970 car. Uh, not, Mark III's are quite hard to get hold of because they weren't run, they didn't run them for very long. And you can see why it's a Mark III because of this extra lip here. They didn't have them on the later cars. 
anyway but it's the one with the outside door and then on the back the same thing this is for minis of course and you can see in the back the way it's supported so this is supporting the center and then it comes through there off both wheel tubs so you can see there off the top of the wheel tub and the wheel tub that so very important to put this bar through the center if you don't do that um, if you take out too much structure like the floor you'll just bend the whole car so yeah and as I said there's very little to it but it's better to make it um, Paul if you particularly um, because he asked me about this if you, if you make it try and make it so that it comes apart because otherwise you know get it's so big and, and quite cumbersome to put away you can imagine how much space two of those would take up in a garage whereas if you can take this out and that out you've got just this thin bit you can put against the wall and obviously the bars now with the XK150 obviously I had to have these uprights welded to it one two three four but on a on an e-type you don't need anything you just need the bars and then you put supports you make supports afterwards um, that hold where the IRS is and uh, I can give you some photographs or some info on that when we get on the WhatsApp together when you're back from Australia. I think you said you were going to Australia for a couple of weeks. So that's basically it. There's really not a lot to it. I will give you some better specs than that, but it's better if you measure the chassis legs yourself or the, because it's monocoque, you'll see what you want to measure is the outside, but it should work out so that these bars fit exactly from front to back exactly in line with those legs so that when you take the floor pans out when you put them back in all you've got to do is clamp the the new floor panel chassis legs to this piece and you know that it's in line okay so as I say it's just a uh, a quick uh, run over it but this thing has seen so much work it's done so many different cars and we've just adapted it as, as and when we've needed it for whatever. But for metal work on the cars or for, for, you know, for rebuilding them, it's an absolute godsend. Um, and the other, the other thing with it as well is when it comes to painting, it means you can paint the car really well um, because it's all on, you know, especially the underneath, which is always difficult, you know, if you have to put the car on one side. So anyway, that's that's basically how it works. So as I said, this will be a project in the future. I don't intend to rebuild it. Um, I don't want to go down that. I want to start using my cars I have got. Uh, but I will build this into a shell, which is as good as, if not better than Heritage, because I know some of the Heritage shells, the doors don't fit right. I mean, we'll be, this will be immaculate and it'll all be lead loaded. There won't be any putty in it, it'll be lead loaded. So it'll be a top quality shell when it's finished. Uh, also got to do the boot floor, got to do the rear valance. There's a lot of work to do on it. It's just a basic shell, but I think it's worth keeping because it's a because it's a Mark III, 1970. It's I think it was registered in 71, but it was built in 70, and I think that's when the crossover was 69 to 71. I believe I'm not sure. Anyway, guys, so that's that's how that jig works. But if you're doing a mini or anything. Unless you're lying the car onto these bars, like I said, because the bars are here and here and the car's strapped to it, you need something through the center if you're doing a massive amount of um, floor work. If you, if you take some of that, most of that floor out, you will bend it uh, just by having it on the front bulkhead and on the rear. You need something through the center, pole, tube, box, whatever you want to use, but you need something to support it front to rear or you'll have problems. Uh, lining things up and obviously what I'll do with this is I'll make a when I turn it upside down and I cut the floor out I'll build I'll build a jig before before I cut the floor out to make sure that these gear stick holes are in the right place everything's in the right place it'll just be a light frame that I can put on um, and it means cutting this out dropping this out of the way and then using the frame to attach the new floor to and know it's in the right position so uh, I'll be getting a floor with, so it'll be a complete new floor, tow board, floor, cross member, heel board, uh, and I'll get two outer sills, but I'm not having them put on. I'll, get, I'll put the outer sills on separately myself, just in case there's a problem. 
and there's quite a lot of work to do to it. Anyway, so that's that's how to make a jig if you if you want to. I don't know what it would cost in steel these days. Probably quite a lot, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. So as I said, we've adapted this this quite a lot, but uh, now I want to use this for uh, an engine. Um, an engine stand and the mini's perfect for that. The only downside might be with these legs sticking out, but I don't know. Turn the engines here. Yeah, should be just about right about here. Should work quite well. But you'll see it in a future video anyway. So I hope that's of some use to you, Paul. And and if you need any specific details, just let me know. Um but um that's the basic design of it. And as I said, you, the, these legs just go straight through there. In fact you can see they're open at the end. Um, it's better to have these um, because even though they are a bit of a pest sometimes when you've got the car uh, up and down um, it will support it much better if they're locked into the bottom as well as the as well as the top it just keeps the whole frame uh, better and it's, it's pretty strong stuff some of this you can see it's been battered a little bit here but that's where we've because it's so tight we've had to knock it on so you can see let you know left rear right rear and so on and so forth so you have to make sure it's in the right position anyway i hope that's of some interest to somebody um if you want to build one definitely worthwhile you can buy rotisseries for minis but they're not the, the metal they're made of is not over great um to be honest for the money they want for him you could knock one up yourself and make a better job i think if you've got the skill to you know if you can cut it and weld it and so on and so forth but make it boltable so that you can move it around and put it away if you don't need it anyway on that note as usual stay safe keep the faith enjoy your hobby and we'll catch you in the next one when we uh, update you with either the xk or the citroen